Hello, I'm Dave, and this is Resident Evil 5 running on NVIDIA's Shield Android TV. So, NVIDIA's micro console packs considerably more GPU power than the last gen consoles, and this gives developers an opportunity to provide an upgraded port, either boosting resolution, frame rates, or perhaps even both. Now we've already seen this happen with Doom the BFG edition. On 360 and PS3 the game was running at 720p but failed to solidly hit 60fps at all times, whereas on the Android TV version the game runs at 1080p 60 and rarely drops below that. It's impressive stuff and a showcase for exactly what Nvidia's micro console can do. Unfortunately not all of the console conversions have been quite so successful. Metal Gear Solid Rising Revengeance, for example, runs at the same 720p resolution as the last gen console versions, but falls considerably short of hitting that important 60fps target. So, in terms of Resident Evil 5, how does the conversion fare then? Well, to be honest, it's another disappointing port to the Android platform, and one that delivers a considerably less enjoyable gameplay experience compared to both last gen and current gen releases. Resolution is 720p, the same as on Xbox 360, however the game runs without any anti-aliasing whatsoever. In this case it means that the presentation when upscaled to 1080p just doesn't look as clean as it does on Xbox 360, which uses variable levels of multi-sample anti-aliasing to smooth over edges. Outside of that there are unusual discrepancies with the artwork. Texture resolution is noticeably lower on the Android TV version, despite the fact that Nvidia's micro console has a total of 3GB of memory, up against just 512MB on the Xbox 360. Surely we should be looking at upgraded assets, at least on par with the PC version, and not a visual downgrade. Unfortunately that's not what we get here, and in addition to that certain special effects have also been paired back. Object blur is missing, while camera motion blur tends to kick in less often. Outside of that the presentation is very similar, but that's not the case when it comes down to gameplay, and right off the bat as soon as we pick up the controller for the first time, it's clear that the Shield TV version just doesn't feel as good to play as on the 360, let alone the PC or indeed current generation ports. On 360 we're looking at a straight 30fps cap, with an adaptive V-Sync in play. Occasionally we see drops to 25 frames per second in demanding scenes, but for the most part the game maintains a consistent 30fps on Microsoft's platform. On the other hand, performance is extremely variable on the Shield TV version, and in fact we see frame rates go from 20fps all the way up to 60 depending on the situation. Most of the time though, we're looking at between 20 and 25fps whenever there's anything interesting on screen. In this case frame times regularly switch between 33 and 50 milliseconds, resulting in on screen judder due to the uneven frame delivery and of course weighty controls due to the increase in latency. In less demanding scenes gameplay doesn't feel quite right either. Frame rates here regularly operate between 40 and 55 fps, however the problem is still the same, there's no consistency here, so once again uneven delivery of frames results in judder and variances in controller response. All of that means the game doesn't look or feel as good to play as it should do, and that's disappointing given the fact that the Tegra X1 and Maxwell GPU combo inside Nvidia's micro console offers up a degree of power that's simply not present on last gen consoles, but Resident Evil 5 doesn't seem to be taking advantage of that. Perhaps the difference in API is partially responsible for that. Essentially Resident Evil 5 looks to be a port of the PC version which uses DirectX, whereas OpenGL is the API of choice for the Android operating system. And essentially what we could be looking at here is a conversion that hasn't been fully optimised around the OpenGL standards or indeed tailored towards Nvidia's micro console. In any case, this results in an experience that could certainly do with improvement. The Shield TV version just isn't very fun to play in its current state, and if you're looking to sample Resident Evil 5 again, this probably isn't the version to go for. Instead, we'd suggest checking out the PC, PS4, Xbox One, or even 360 versions. All of those are going to give you a good, solid experience. Anyway, that's pretty much it for now. 
If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to give us a like or subscribe. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.